to let Schwab tires. I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. All right, welcome back. We have game two coming up here. Tennyson Woods College of Australia against Glacier Peak High School from Snohomish, Washington. And I'm Mark Ockett along with Todd Elvig. And we are brought to you as our presenting sponsor, Les Schwab Tires, presenting sponsor since 2021 and doing the right thing since 1952. Also, we want to welcome Adrenaline Fundraising, American Family Insurance, Bickford Ford, Grit Hand, Crafted Wood, Home Comfort Alliance, McDonald's Do It Best Hardware, Monster Energy Drink, the U.S. Military, and Washington Officials Association. So here we go. Mark Ockett with Todd Elvig. And this is game two. In game one, Tennyson Woods came back from a 10-point deficit, and they defeated Glacier Peak in the girls game 53-52. to Will it happen for a doubleheader sweep? Well, that's what we're going to find out. And I'm going to get you the starters for both teams. First of all, the head coach, both for the girls and the boys, is Matt Sutton. He's just been fabulous to talk with, and we hope to talk to him after the game. Assistant coach is Anthony Holmes, and the team manager is Aaron Ilsley. Their athletic director is Kieran Buckley, and Tanya's been really helpful as well as our liaison. So you've got Jackson Bowden is starting as one starter for Tennyson Woods. Taj Brumby, Mitch Garwood, Harry Mules, and Harry Wright are your starters for Tennyson Woods out of Australia for the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. It'll also be going Adam Loam, also Joe Lee. So Loam is a 6'5 post player, a senior. Joe Lee, a 6'2 wingman junior. Isaiah Cuellar Bell, a 6'0 wing player. He is a senior. Reed Nagel, a 5'11 guard. He's a sophomore. And Jace Nelson, a 6'3 wing, is a junior. The head coach, welcome back Brian Hunter, who took a year sabbatical last year and is back as head coach. This is his 15th year as head coach. And uh, Glacier Peak opened in uh, 2008. His assistants are Todd Tipke, Dylan Vargas, Jeff Leary, and Brandon Corsi. The volunteers, Adam Thomas and Cody Wendland. So we are here at Glacier Peak High School home of the Grizzlies, and uh, the response we've been getting from down there in Australia has been incredible. Over 700 viewers as they just kept climbing, not all from Australia, but a big portion of them. And uh, we're at 110 right now, which early, and we're going to have the National Anthem. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more right after this timeout. And Mikhail, Mikhail, Michael, 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 lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The officials for tonight's game, Alec Turlin, C.J. Freeman, and Mike McFadden. I'm surprised. We're back live here at Glacier Peak High School in Snohomish, home of the Grizzlies. Again, uh, the girls from Tennyson Woods College, and it's equivalent to high school in Australia. Coming up with a 53-52 victory in game number one. And we'll see how the boys do this time around. And we were noticing that their both teams have some height out there. As Glacier Peak taking the floor, they've got the white uniforms with the silver and black trim down the side. And also Glacier Peak spelled across the chest in the silver. Tennyson Woods will be in the navy blue. They've got the white numbers on the back and Titans in the light powder blue like UCLA covers up front. Same color combination and uniform style as the girls. And I, I found out something from Matt Sutton, the head coach, for both the boys and the girls. 
the girls had only had six practices coming in. No kidding, six. And they look like they've been playing for months together. Very impressive. I mean, Glacier Peak with a big game as well, but Tennyson Woods came back and got him at the end. Here we go, jump ball time. Nice toss. So we're going to look and see if the style is similar. I uh, imagine it would be, and, of course, you work some of that around your personnel. And we are underway in game number two on STSBN.com, broadcasting internationally. There's a three-pointer. That is Jolie for three. I see right where the viewer count is, so it's going to be fun to watch that climb. And, Todd, we have uh – uh-oh. Over and back. Backward violation. Glacier Peak ran into some turnover problems in that first game as they turned it over 16 times, and uh, Tennyson Woods was under 10. Peak will inbound. Now keep in mind that Glacier Peak jumped out to a 6 to nothing lead early on against Tennyson Woods, and we're looking at each other going, where's this going? And uh, then Tennyson Woods just kept hanging in there. That's three. Three point basket, three. That is Isaiah Cuellar Bell with the three-pointer. Now it's six to nothing. Glacier Peak, same kind of scenario as that first game coming up on seven minutes to go. Fadeaway jumper, no good. Here comes Peak with the board and rebound, and Glacier Peak is running out the gate quick. They are moving the ball very quickly up court, Todd. Yeah, I think uh, Hunter has got the uh, playbook out. Well, he doesn't want to lose to this team, and he does not want to sweep. But Tennyson Woods has other ideas in mind. There's a go. Nice head fake. And we're going to have a blocking foul called against Glacier Peak. If you're Tennyson Woods, you don't want to let get Glacier Peak to get too big of a lead for obvious reasons. That's going to be a foul against Joe Lee, his first foul, and team foul number one. Glacier Peak also got into foul trouble in that first game. They had two players foul out. Three-pointer. He got a piece of it underneath. It's almost over the back. That's what I thought the initial foul might be, but it's going to be two shots as it goes in the Titans' favor. That was on Joyce Nelson, Jace Nelson, his first. And that's team foul number two. We got two shots here. First one drops in. That's her first point of the game. Jackson Bowden with the points there. Oh, you're trying to see the uh, Yeah, I'm number. just trying to watch the numbers. I think it's kind of fun now that I know where it is on the screen. 206. Wow, that was a jump of about 100 in a very short period of time. We want to say hi to all our viewers here in the United States and locally. Wonderful reverse that time for Joe Lee. He's got five of the eight, eight to one. Seven-point lead for Glacier Peak. And intercepted. Second turnover for Tennyson Woods. 6.08 to go. First quarter here at Glacier Peak High School. We've got two more games this week. Again, Todd, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, Snohomish and Issaquah. And then Friday night is Everett and Mount Vernon. Is that at Ever- that is at Everett, and then tomorrow night's at Snohomish. There's a shot. Oh, wow. Off the glass. Isaiah Cuellar Bell, nine-point lead and out of bounds. Glacier Peak's going to get it. So Tennyson Woods rather tentative here in the first part of this one. Into the game for now in for Tennyson Woods will be Mackay Barron. You know, I talked to uh, Hunter ahead of the game. I said, how did the fellas look? He says, well, you just watch. There you go. Zach Nolte is in. Zach's. I believe that's his mom, Deanna, is the team manager for the girls. we got a couple of players from JV that are with Varsity tonight, too. Checking in will be Zach Nolte now. And that would be Jeff Slattery and Cade Watson. Inbounds. Good. That's good by number 21. Jace. Jace Nelson has it. It's an 11-point lead at 12-1. to 1. It's contrast to what we saw in the first game at this point. 5.32 to go in the first quarter. Second game of our doubleheader on STSPN.com. That's off the mark. Air ball and a quick rebound. There's some speed coming up right in front of us. 
as they go left to right on your TV screen. There we go, on your flat screen most likely. Off the rim, no good. For Tennyson Woods to get back in this game, they just have to be patient each time down the court. Oh, another block. Adam Loam has uh, been uh, really good with those blocks. He's got a couple of them. And Loam is 6'5". Second biggest player on Glacier Jolie. Oh, Jolie connects on it 15-1. to one. A 14-point lead for Glacier Peak. They blast out of the gate up by that mount. 4.46 to go here in the first quarter. Back with more. For 45 years, Snohomish County homeowners have relied on Home Comfort Alliance for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical because of their award-winning customer service. Thousands of reviews reference Home Comfort Alliance as professional, knowledgeable, efficient, and technicians who are courteous, and they take the time to explain things. For all your home comfort systems, call 1-833-COMFORT and make your life more comfortable with Home Comfort Alliance. Welcome back. 15-1 to 1, Glacier Peak off to a blistering start against Tennyson Woods College. Again, they say college, but in, in other parts of the world, a high school could be referred to as a college and they have grades from uh, what would be equivalent to kindergarten and then through the 12th grade at Tennyson Woods. Uh, enrollment of thir- about 1,300. Oh, tough break. Tough break. They do not have a field goal as of yet. Yeah, I don't think they're calling any schools here colleges in the K-12. There are those academies that are like prep schools or 13th grade. Isaiah Cuellar Bell, and it's now a 16-point lead. Well, figuratively speaking. It was a, it was a funny. An educational funny. Rebound now. Glacier Peak gets the ball coming out of backcourt. Backing up. Well, yeah, they've not just- been shy out here. You can't give Jolie any room because if you do, he's going to hit. You cannot. He's just a junior. Jolie looking sharp. And it's Josiah. There he is underneath. Boom. Look at this guy. He's got 10 points. Jolie. 10 of the 19. It's an 18 point lead at 19 to 1. Tennyson Woods having a tough time. And if you hit 40, that's in the second half, right? Then you got the running clock. I think you have to get to the second half, if I remember correctly. Well, there's their first field goal. Bowden gets the basket. It's 19-3. to 3 2 to go in the first quarter here at, at Glacier Peak High School. And uh, what are we, about uh, 25 minutes from or miles from Seattle? Yeah, we're about uh, – I think, I think it's better to say that we're – we're like, uh... <laughs> yeah. Would you stop? There we go. <laughs> that basket is good by Jace Nelson. 21 to 3. Back to an 18 point lead. Seattle, home of the Seattle Seahawks in football and the Seattle Mariners in baseball. Seattle Kraken in hockey. Boy, I like that Kraken. Uh, they're struggling a bit this year, but they are definitely fun to watch. Overall, Jace Nelson with a foul, his second, third team foul. Nearly deflected away. Far side. Shot off on the baseline. We got a foul. I think that's going to be against Joe Lee. That would be his second. Foul number two, Joe Lee. Second foul, 14. Hey, did you watch the games on Thanksgiving? I mean, you're a football guy to the core. And a basketball guy, no question about that. I actually uh, was spending time with my uh, new granddaughter. That's right. You're a grandpa now. And which son had the baby? I mean, his wife. <laughs> uh, Jacob. Jacob, your oldest son. The, no. No, the younger son. You get those two mixed up. Yes, I do. Josh and Jacob. 
Look at that guy. That is 12 points for him and a 20-point lead. Timeout called, 157 left to go. Glacier Peak called it in. uh, That's their first timeout. 30 seconds, and we'll just keep it right here. So, again, Tennyson Woods won the girls' game 53-52. Not looking as promising for the boys right now, and Glacier Peak might pop a 30 up there. But I'm just trying to recall if the running clock can be running in the first half. I think it has to be the second half. Then you have the running clock, which speeds up the process. Look at the Glacier Peak fans over there. And we have uh, Sarah zoom in on that a little bit more. Look at this. Glacier Peak has really got a lot of people out here tonight. You see American flags out there. I, I'm thinking they probably had a rally earlier today. Show us your colors. There's one guy that's dressed in like a American flag bathrobe. He looks like Apollo Creed in Rocky IV. <laughs> Titans will inbound, down by 20. 152 to go here in the first quarter. Mark Ockett, Todd Elvig, and Sarah Elvig is on camera. Whistle on the floor. Offensive foul against Harry Mules, his first foul, first team. So next week is when Sarah goes for the big interview for her whole possible EMT job. We're keeping our fingers crossed, and she can move out of the house. Is that correct? <laughs> it's no, it's, <laughs> your fingers never are, moving out. Your fingers are really crossed. There you go. Good thing she's not on the headphones. I get bopped upside the head on that one. <laughs> yeah. I'd be in some serious pain. There's a shot that That's is good, good by Reed Nagel, and it's up to a 22-point lead. And Again, I'm going to ease off the gas a little bit here because Glacier Peak just running – the Titans rag it out there. That looked, yeah, yeah that's good. 25, Jackson Bowden. Jackson Bowden has all five points for Tennyson Woods. 54 seconds left. We're up to 162. No, no, no. Oh, 336. More. Oh, 336. Over oh, over there. 336 is our viewership. Shot rims off. So what we have is over 1,000 tonight. Between the two broadcasts, correct? Now, I know we have some repeaters, but as far as uh, ratings are concerned and advertisers are concerned, we're just packing the house. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly what they're looking for. Now, you were telling me last night when we were at Jackson for the 71-63 win, Jackson over Arlington, that there was a football game, uh, West Lynn against Lake, Lake Stevens, that had almost 9,000 viewers. Correct. That was a fist fight. Ah. <sighs> I showed you the number. Yeah, it was like... Because you weren't believing me. Well, no, I did. I, I just was... You thought I was using that fuzzy math. <laughs> um, no, it's impressive as all get out. Lake Stevens playing for the football championship, trying to repeat under Tom Try in his 19th season. That will be on Saturday, and that will be on KRKO. Shot is going to be off the mark. And that's the end of the first quarter. 25-5 is the score. Glacier Peak is up by 20. We'll have the second quarter coming up next. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know them personally, so you know exactly who's life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together, and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood, and it's a, it's a real brotherhood, and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood, and that, that's what matters. We got the head coach over here uh, of uh, the uh, Glacier Peak Grizzlies. He just for uh, football. 
Fantastic. Glacier Peak, one of the two high schools in the Snohomish School District. The other one, the namesake of Snohomish, Snohomish High School, which goes back to the 1800s, I believe 1894. Glacier Peak started in 2008, just a few years later. And the Titans yeah, went down just, just waiting for you to I catch that, that one. Yeah. Um, well, it's the distance here. We're in different time zones yeah. at this uh, table. But speaking of time zones, it's, what, 17 and a half hours different between here and down there in Australia. As the Titans, just to refresh, or if you're just tuning in to get things rolling here tonight for your evening, the Titans south of Adelaide, and they are in Gambier. That's where they're located, south of Adelaide. Well, let's have, Debbie look, they're here. let's have Debbie look up the population of Adelaide and the population of Australia. I think there are 22 million. I think so. I didn't get a chance to look at that tonight. That's how many subscribers we have. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me by the end of the night that we did have uh, with the way it's gone. And again, thank you to everybody watching down in Australia. We appreciate that. We really do. And all the comments from local and down there, it's just as great. It's been a fun night. I mean, unfortunately, Tennyson Woods is having a rough time in this boys game. But as far as our interaction and just the energy in here and, and the crowd, I mean, this place, big crowd in here tonight. Band is here. Number three, Isaiah. That's Isaiah Cuerar Bell. He's got seven. 12 points for Joe Lee. He leads all scorers. Jackson Bowden with all five points. He's got the ball. For the Titans, for Tennyson Woods, way outside. Beautiful shot. Zach Nolte buries it, 26-8. It was up to 22 points at 25-3, to 6.45 to go second quarter. There's another one. Nothing but net. Quayar Bell's got two three-pointers in this one. And a grand total of 10 points, five in each quarter. 29 to 8. I just talked uh, my assistant executive producer into taking the STSPN flag over to the... Uh... Underneath. Great pass, and it's Addie Noble. Addie Noble in the game gets a couple. It's 29 to 10. Good to see Tennyson Woods picking it up. So they have matched their point total from the first quarter. And Glacier Peak has scored four. So they're outscoring them five to four in the second. Six minutes to go. Second quarter, Mark Ockett with Todd Elvig, and Sarah's going to take the flag over. There we go. Inside, Zachary Albright. Albright coming through. 32-10, back to a 22-point lead. Got something on the baseline. That's going to be a foul against the Grizzlies. Foul uh, number 10, Sam Waldo, his first. Sam Waldo called for the foul, his first team foul, number one. So, yeah, I uh, went to Taiyi High School. Now, originally, before there was a law passed about a year and a half ago, said they can't have Native American mascot names. I don't know how it would be the Taiyi totems and the Sammamish totems. I just simply don't know how a totem pole is offensive. But apparently it is. Uh, and so um, we're now the Titans. I think that's because they were trying to put your face on it. Oh, wow. That's a beautiful <laughs> That's a beautiful piece of humor right there. That's like hitting a grand slam in the second deck at T-Mobile Park. 32 to 10. Well done, Todd. Shot on the way. That, and I think that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. We digress. Should have, I think that should have been done on an individual school basis, but what do I know? Zach Albright with the foul, his first. And that is team foul number two. Glacier Peak up by 22, 32, 10, 5, 12 left here in the second period, which they have up there. I think they keep first period up all the time. You can't even get parts for these scoreboards anymore. <laughs> you cannot get parts. They're so old. I mean, at what point, 33 Look coming that. through, that's Taj Brumby. Taj is on the board. He's got three points. Maybe uh, he was inside the line. Two-pointer. 
32-12. Todd, I think what's going to happen, and I, I can see this happening, is that you and I are going to get in here one of these nights, and we're going to get on each side, and we're each going to take a scoreboard down. There's a three-pointer. Sam Waldo. He's got five, 35, 12, 23 point lead, their biggest. Yeah, we have to give a shout out to Heather Waldo. I'm sure she's watching. Oh, Maybe there you go. She should be here. Probably, you know a actually. lot of parents. I know that because your whole family went here. Three point basket, number 33. That's Brumby coming through. He's got a couple of quick baskets here, 35 15. Debbie says that she knows somebody that has relatives in Brainerd, Minnesota, where you're from. Really? Yeah. There's a basket. That is good. Venture coming through with the hoop. 37-15. That's on your screen. Well, I'll just count the time down. Well, you know, I know everybody in Brainerd, so no. I'm well, <laughs> you used to when you lived yeah. back there. Yeah. So we have one stop. Just, right there just since sure. we've been going out of town talking to Australia, how big of a town is or was Brainerd? When you were growing up, eleven thousand. Eleven thousand, and what is it close to? Uh, well, I mean, as far you've got like St. Cloud, you got Minnesota, right. Minneapolis. St. Cloud is halfway from Brainerd to the Twin Cities. Okay, okay. But our big claim to fame up there is uh, Brainerd International Raceway. Oh which wow! Which is on the NHRA circuit. I did not know that. It's a it's a hot rod raceway. It is. That's a, that's really cool. And there we go. Venture coming through. It's a 24-point lead out, and they pick it off. 39-15. Glacier pick up. 3-14 to go in the second quarter. But their Are you familiar with Sartell? The previous name uh, for the raceway was Donnybrook. Now, Donnybrook. Why would, why I've heard you, of that. Why would you ever change that name? I agree. I agree. Are you familiar with Sartell, Minnesota? We've got relatives there, or, or Debbie does. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think you might be saying. Hey, um, Chair, you think I'm making it up? No, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound like a city I recognize. I it's not too far from St. Cloud. Hmm. All right, what are we looking at viewership-wise? Let's take a peek. Yeah, they're probably getting off now because we're digressing. we got a, we got a high grass. 434, it keeps jumping up. Thank you, viewers, all over the world. It's a love train is what it is. Glacier Peak will have the basketball with 2.40 left here in the second quarter, first half. And it's cool over there. They, I think, is that the Titan people holding the Australian flag up? or I think it's Glacier Peak. Yeah, it's Glacier Peak fans holding the Australian flag up. That is an excellent display of sportsmanship. That absolutely is. We had the Australian National Anthem before the first game. It's a long one. It is. But it, the vocals were outstanding. Shot on the way. Rims out of there. Good, strong rebound. That's Taj Brumby. He's got five points in the oh. quarter and goes a bit long. Out of bounds, Glacier Peak will have the ball. When we get to halftime, we'll have the break, and then we'll uh, take and come back about a minute or so before the start of the second half. Then halftime is 10 minutes. That number three, he's a big fella. He is a big fella. Uh, we got basic information on these players. We did not get heights. We only had so much time to get their rosters. But the coaching staff and athletic director were very accommodating, very cooperative is whatever we need, and just nice folks. Out of bounds, that's ball Tennyson ball. Woods' ball. Now back in for Tennyson Woods, Jackson Bowden. He's playing with five points all in the first half, first quarter. They've hit two three-pointers, one by Zach Nolte, one by Taj Brumby. Inside, there's a one-on-three travel. Turns it back over to Glacier Peak. Julie yeah. Smith says that... Uh, Mount Gambier is four and a half hours south of Adelaide and five hours west of Melbourne. Wow, it's almost like right in the middle of Adelaide and Melbourne. Looking at the map, I wouldn't have thought it was four and a half from Adelaide, but I guess so. Hey, Mrs. Smith said so. 
then it's true. Absolutely. That's Jamie's mom. So we got a foul down there, and that is going to be whistled against Mitch Garwood, his first. He was one of the starter in team foul number four. Missing at the line is Venture, his first trip. Matter of fact, that's the first foul shot for the Glacier Peak Grizzlies in this game. Tennyson Woods is one for one. Out it goes. He goes 0 for 2. 110 to go in the first half. A little bit of a loss of the dribble. Look at this guy. Taking it in a little bit high. Oh, he almost got that to drop. That was above the square. One minute to go now. Second half action. 24-point lead for the Grizzlies. That's the second one where we saw where they got really, it's, it got stolen. It's kind of bounced out. Yep, it, it, that's true. It just barely missed on that high board shot. Oh, excellent defense right there coming through. A near steal for Jackson Bowden. Bowden's been impressive here. All right, hey, Brandon Hamilton from KRKO, who's uh, the esteemed in-studio producer for at least, I think, a decade now. He's been texting me, and he says that Australia has a population, uh, this was in 2021, of 25.61 million people. How many? 21.61. Wow. I believe Debbie's got some information, too. So Melbourne has a population of 5.235 million. That's about a million different than the um, city or the, the, the state of Washington. And according to her facts, as of March 31st, Australia has a population of 26,473,055 people. And those 55 people all traveled up here with Tennyson Woods. Adelaide has a population of 1 million 367,000. Boy, great research, Debbie. Yeah, this is really good. Brandon and Debbie, thank you very much. We're good. This has been an incredibly interactive broadcast tonight. Really enjoying this. <laughs> I got stats from so many years from Debbie. It's like I'm going to need an abacus to figure this out. Okay. 30 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Remember, we'll have the player of the game on after the game. Glacier Peak with the basketball. Now, we had two delightful young ladies on who were part of the big win for Tennyson Woods in that first game. They won 53-52 over Glacier Peak. And we had Ellie Boucher up here. Ellie was nervous to start. She wanted to do it. She didn't want to do it. And uh, Siobhan Adams came up with her. And once we put the headsets on, Ellie, she was off to the races. Oh, yeah. No problem. I see a future in broadcasting possibly for Ellie Boucher because after that, she was there was no shyness. No, and, and, and you know, of course, we'll probably get a little mileage out of that. Oh, you're going to probably make a promo out of it. You might have to talk to her agent, though. <laughs> yeah, well, there it is. Look out. Reed Nagel hits them both. It's a 26-point lead, 41-15. Five team fouls for Tennyson Woods. That's just off the rim. The Glacier Peak. There it goes in the air, and that's the end of the first half. 41 to 15 as Glacier Peak leads by a total of uh, 26 points. That's their biggest lead of the game. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with more here on STSBN. Second half will come up in about nine minutes. Thank you. generation the next level sending it big in for a good run let's go come with us to the track to the trails to the slopes to the surf to the fight to the race to the 4 a.m starts training harder pushing further hitting back hard you better pray for it. I put that thing on you. You have a pray with it. 
To the fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us, to the blood, to the sweat, and the broken bones. You rehab. We never quit. We never give up. We take control. To the world titles. To the world's first. The world's best. Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from the guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Full practice, switch doctor, request immediate hot extract. Here on a team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know him personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood. And it's a, it's a real brotherhood. And it's a loyal and honest brotherhood. And that, that's what matters. For 45 years, Snohomish County homeowners have relied on Home Comfort Alliance for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical because of their award-winning customer service. Thousands of reviews reference Home Comfort Alliance as professional, knowledgeable, efficient, and technicians who are courteous, and they take the time to explain things. For all your home comfort systems, call 1-833-COMFORT and make your life more comfortable with Home Comfort Alliance. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle, visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis, always faithful, always Marine, marking a path for the next generation.
Hewitt Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniels the best and one of the most recognized do-it-best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniels and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniels. Uh. Uh. We'll get you on next. Oh, there we go. So it's Tanya, right? Yeah, that's right. And what's your last name? Thompson. Tanya Thompson. And we have Kieran Buckley, right? Okay. Welcome back. We are live here with a couple of guests from our good friends now from Australia. And that is Athletic Director Kieran Buckley. And Tanya Thompson, hi, how are you doing? We're doing really well. It's been uh, a whirlwind uh, five days. We arrived uh, in San Francisco um, after 36 hours of travel, basically, and wow. uh, made our way up to Seattle. And now we're here enjoying everything Glacier Peak has to offer. It's been an amazing night. That's fantastic. Uh, where are you staying at around here? Uh, we're in downtown Seattle at the moment. And... Uh, Part of the process or part of the experience is immersing ourselves in the American culture. So we, we've really enjoyed, particularly our time in San Francisco. There's such a beautiful city. It and is. It's such a, a cultural experience that we don't get to see all that often in Australia. Um, and then to come up to Seattle and see the beautiful city that that is as well. Um, but then also see some of the real life issues oh, that oh, you face yeah. over here in the States. Yeah, and, we've got. What's it like in Australia? I mean, obviously, part of that is the homeless. Here, uh, do you have a lot of that down there? Not a lot. Not that we see. Um, I guess it's probably a lot more visible for the kids to see yeah. walking around the streets yesterday. But, uh, yeah, quite confronting. Yeah, yeah, That's a great word for it. We, yeah, They're trying to figure it out, especially in Seattle, and they're having trouble with that. But moving back to basketball, great win for the girls, 53-55. Yeah. We had uh, Ellie up here. Uh, with one of her buddies, to uh, she was nervous, and then she got rolling right away. So well, you can't stop her once she gets started. <laughs> and so, no, it's been great. You've been uh, both liaisons for us to get us the information, and we thank you very much. I know the boys are having a tough time, but Glacier Peaks just came out of the gate strong. But the girls battled back from a ten-point yeah, right. deficit and got it done. Uh, very uh, on both sides, very well coached with uh, Matt Sutton as the head coach. He, he's got both boys and girls. Oh, Matt, Matt's an exceptional coach. We're very lucky to have Matt uh, a part of our program at Tennyson Woods College. Matt himself was a very accomplished basketballer. He um, he played at the highest level in Australia in the NBL with the Adelaide 36ers. He's the current coach of our NBL 1 team, which is uh, the league just below the NBL for the Mount Gambier Pioneers. And uh, I think he's actually won Coach of the Year twice in the South Conference. Wow. Um, so he, he's a very credentialed 
coach. Very lucky to have him. And um, the girls also, they respond very well to his approach um, as well. Our girls uh, traditionally also are very strong. We play this game called netball in Australia, and it's essentially basketball without the dribbling. So I'm not sure if you noticed at all, and the, the American footy, uh, viewers at home, how well the Australian team yeah. traditionally passed the ball, which um, which just create, which generates so much offense. And once the girls are able to settle down um, and get themselves into the game, um, yeah, that, that, that passing game becomes a real feature of ours. On the flip side with the boys... Um, our boys team back home are actually very um, are very strong, um, but it's such a wonderful experience for our boys program to come across because there is lots of uh, publicity um, and there is pathways too available for our boys to make their way across to the States for college education. We see all the NBA stuff on the television. Yeah. For them to come across and then see it firsthand how big the pool is, how much talent there is yeah. in the U.S., globally, not just in Australia, not just in our small pocket, is, is actually a wonderful experience in itself too. So our JV boys got a taste of that. And now our varsity boys, who are competing really well, but they, they're, they're copying um, a taste too of that, that next level of basketball. Is, yeah. And essentially that's what they're striving for. Then, then this is the level that they have to, to elevate their game to. So it is actually, uh, regardless of the score, yeah. a really rich and rewarding experience. That's fantastic. And, you know, the, the thing that we, we noticed right out the gate, was the passing. Like you said, we saw the, the rebounding and the outlet passing, boom, right down court. Well, Ellie and, had that really long pass. Yeah, that yeah, that good. was yeah. the one. Yeah. And, and right out, originally, we are going, whoa, what's, that's incredible. Yeah. And uh, and then all, we have a, uh, I also announced for Seattle Pacific University, we have a gentleman from New South Wales, Australia, Trace Evans, and uh, he's quite good. You guys have some some very good basketball down there. That's a that's a big yeah, that's factor. Up. You also have Australian rules football, correct? Uh, and you play cricket down there. Uh, what about baseball? We we do we do have there is an Australian league. We do have um, a lot of the professional players uh, from the US come out um, and play in that particular league, but um, not not as a larger profile as some of those sports that you listed off. Okay, uh, but you know the Australian rules football and cricket and rugby. Yeah, rugby. You, oh, it, look, cricket is probably one of our national games in the okay. summer, no question. And then uh, AFL is probably the leading. Uh, it's it's equivalent to the NFL, if you like, in terms of the power it has, the financial backing it has, and the popularity that it has okay. uh, back in the country. So it's probably probably fair to say that AFL is the number one code, yeah. um, along with the rugby that you mentioned. Uh, but basketball's profile is definitely that's um, a big one. picking up too as well. We have a number of. Uh, players who are opting to, to have that alternate pathway um, out of college, come play professionally in Australia. I think yeah. it's starting to be recognised. The NBL One comp is starting to be recognised as a, a legitimate league for the next the next play, for Would that players be, uh, to come through. National Basketball League, is That's that what out, that, yeah, that stands, for? stands for? So, Tanya, uh, what, uh, obviously you've been helpful to us. You've helped get the, the viewers on board for us. Uh, what is your official title or role with the uh, – the uh, operation with the firm. My of official title, administration. That's fantastic. Yeah. So you two work together, I would imagine. Generally, yes. I'm the director of Kieran. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate both of you, everything you've done. We've had an exciting night. We've had great viewership uh, all over the world because we can monitor yeah. that. And then uh, here and then, of course, in Australia, we've had, we, because of the chat room, we've had a chance to talk to parents. We've had... Jamie Smith's parent, Trixie Crouch. We've had uh, Edie, Edie Esterby's. Edie Easterby. Yep. Easterby, excuse me. Uh, and then we also had Poppy Venn's dad, I think, checked in. Oh, great. But she had a great Damien, fourth yeah, quarter. Played a no doubt about it. So well, we thank you for stopping by thank and uh, all your hospitality. Thank you so much. Thank you very it's much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Can't wait to go to Australia sometime. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're ambassadors for it. Oh, we try. Thank we you try. so much. <laughs> All right, Thank that you. is uh, that is great. Karen uh, Buckley, who's the athletic director and uh, at Tennis and Woods, and then also Tanya Thompson, who's in administration. Uh, this has been this has been something. 5:29 to go. Oh yes, by the way, there is a game going on. 45:15, a 30-point lead for Glacier Peak. If you hit 40-point lead, it's a running clock. But I, I felt that was important, Todd. To get them on board. What's our viewership at right now? Let's take a peek at that. Wow. 
600. We had 700 for the first one. Uh, this is high school sports, and that, that is really good. And uh, we, I think we're going to top our first game. I think we'll probably get over 700 the way it's going right now. I, I've been working for you for 12 years, and this is as much fun as I've ever had. Isn't that great? And I, are they just like a couple of the nicest people you ever talked totally. to? Totally. Just very open and very communicative. Yeah, yeah I, I, I tell you, that, that says a lot for Australia, and it's interesting to get a social perspective too as to what they've got going on down there and uh i can't wait to get there someday that's going to be something special it's funny how they how they they you know it was very stark when they're talking about uh homelessness you know they're like we just don't have that kind of thing yeah nor should we have it to the degree no, that it is up here but that's a topic for another day glacier peak adds to their lead they're up to uh 31 point lead and uh just Kicking back, watching this one as the girls won for Tennyson Woods, 53-52. We've tried to give you as much information as possible. I do have a little bit more as this game goes on. Three team fouls for Tennyson Woods, two now for Glacier Peak, and heading to the foul line will be Jackson uh, Bowden, as he'll have a couple of shots right there. Some more information. And uh, that is the capital city of Australia is Canberra, or Canberra, and its uh, population is 456,000. So that's like, that's their Washington, D.C., okay? And you've been to Australia. Yeah. Well, you were probably Perth. given the Medal of Honor down there. Yeah, Perth, we were on our way to uh, the uh, Indian Ocean when we stopped there. Oh, wow. And what were you on board? I was on board the uh, USS Acadia. Which would be what uh, classification? That particular ship, because I was on several, was a uh, subtender. Okay. So we just drive it around and give supplies to subs that, and fix them and that kind of thing. That in itself is pretty awesome. Driving to the basket, Joe Lee. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout. 48 16, Glacier Peak by 32. 425 to go in the third quarter on STSPN.com. For 45 years, Snohomish County homeowners have relied on Home Comfort Alliance for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical because of their award-winning customer service. Thousands of reviews reference Home Comfort Alliance as professional, knowledgeable, efficient, and technicians who are courteous, and they take the time to explain things. For all your home comfort systems, call 1-833-COMFORT and make your life more comfortable with Home Comfort Alliance. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Well, Todd, well, we see McDaniel's Do It Center. They've been in, uh, on board as a charter sponsor since 2010. When that you was got the this word I was for looking for. Charter. Uh, charter. Yeah, they, they started. They've been on board from the beginning, and we certainly thank them and uh, the great things they do. They got a wide variety of pretty much everything there. And bullets. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. <laughs> yeah, we've had a, a, it's been a very amazing evening here with our guests from Australia, Tennyson Woods College, equivalent to a high school. They are down in Australia, and uh, we, they're down by 32. But, I, they, you know, we were talking about Glacier Peak is very good. I mean, it's not like Tennyson Woods is losing to an average mediocre team. Glacier Peak is a, is a very good team. And so, you know, they're going to beat up on a few teams, not just a team from Australia, but uh, they're going to be tough all season long. Brian Hunter is back after taking a year off, and he's you know. And sometimes you need to do that; just get a little refresh. Correct. Taking it in will be Isaiah Cuellar Bell. Number three, Isaiah. You got to look as we get a little closer to player of the game. It's up to a 34-point lead. I don't. Basket by number 34, Eddie Noble. Yep. Yeah, I think that uh, it's just good coaching. Think of all the teams that uh, Tennyson has played now on the West Coast or are going, to, going play. to play. Yeah, And 
what a great experience. I mean, they're just going to come back with just some really good basketball knowledge. And knowledge of the uh, American culture, uh, I think. And, and, and all uh, that's a great-looking play right there. Look at that. Harry Wright puts it in off a great pass. So Tennyson Woods just going hard right now, even though they're down by a significant amount. But I, I got some more numbers here. So Perth, where you have been, has a population, according to Debbie Larson, our quality control and information expert, Perth is at 2023-21, or 2.118 million. I also want to say hi to Mom. Natty listening down in the, the near Des Moines area, so hi to Mom, too. So Perth at 2,118,000. Now, I thought Sydney was the biggest city, but they're actually a bit behind Melbourne. Melbourne's at about 5.4. Sydney's at 5.1. But they do have the Sydney Opera House. So they get points for that. That's a beautiful structure. So uh, I got a this Mick Venn. Mm-hmm. Turns out he is Poppy Venn's uncle. Oh, okay. So shout out to his brother, Damien. Damien's Poppy's dad. Uh, is that right? I think that would be right. Because we heard from it. Would did we hear from Damien earlier? I thought we heard from her dad. Now Poppy had a great fourth quarter for the girls of Tennyson Woods, and she came through. Really a spark plug there. She had 12 points, three two-pointers and two three-pointers. Uh, Brisbane, another population I was looking for. Brisbane? The Brisbane, yeah. And uh, 2505000 They've got some populous cities down there, but then you've got the Outback, too. <laughs> yeah. You've got. And you got a lot of stuff down there that will kill you. Yeah, you better watch out. Yeah, no, I mean, Crocodile Dundee, we are not. Snakes, and I mean, because we're up here in Washington. We don't have anything. I mean. Oh, come on. I mean, we got cougars. Okay. We got lions and tigers and bears. Yeah, we, yeah, out somewhere. <laughs> right. Oh, my. And uh, so they've got, no, we have cougars up here. We have bears. Yeah, I don't want to mess with either one of those. If you step on a needle. <laughs> And we're not talking pine needles. Yeah. 53-22. It was up to a 33-point lead, now 31. And, again, I, it's a one-sided game. There's no reason to rub salt on the wound. Just let the uh, pitchers tell the story with 108 to go in the third quarter. But you've also got the world-famous koala bears down there in Australia. You've got alligators. Well, I had some smart aleck, and I and I shouldn't say a smart aleck. I, I somebody chimed in and said that we ride kangaroos to school, and I don't even know if this guy is for real. He's you know, I would ask one of our Australian rule uh, viewers if they do indeed, at times, or if it's a normal thing, ride kangaroos to school. Yeah, we, no, this guy says that he does, but you know, he's probably some. Smart Alec American saying that. I don't know. I don't know that that's incorrect. I, you can't ride a king. I don't know. That's something we need to find out by the end of this broadcast. Well, that's like, I could see that. That's like you walking uphill both ways to school in the <laughs> snow. Well, but I didn't use a kangaroo. Um, And you've got dingoes down there. Now, dingoes are dogs. Yeah, but dingoes are kind of like coyotes, right? Yes, they are. Dingoes are actually, there's a derivative there, but there's many that are domesticated. And you've got a... What, you got like a little pet dingo? I don't have a pet dingo. I have Boston Terriers, which have been on the network before. But they would be the equivalent to a dingo here in the United States. (laughs) They'd be lunch for a dingo. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, look at that. Glacier Peak adds to it. 55-23. We're winding down in the third quarter. Joe Lee's a machine. He is a machine. He's a one-man wrecking crew. Yeah, we got to find out uh, about his availability post-game show, but he came out of the gate firing away. 12 points in that first quarter, and he is something special. And he's a junior? I just Junior. I have a hard time with that. Because I'm looking like at that, and he is. I double-checked. He is a junior. <laughs> Seems like you've been playing basketball for. It does, doesn't years. it? 55 23 is our score at the end of three. 
we got the fourth and final quarter coming up here on STSPN. Stay tuned. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. We're not here to take part, we're here to take over. I am the beast. Okay, now Debbie, Deborah Larson, Deborah Page Larson down in uh, Magnolia at the, the uh, Quality Control Center has once again come up with some interesting information. And that is that is kangaroo riding a thing? And it is a thing. It is? Uh, really? Many children do ride kangaroos to school. They are required by law, however, to wear safety helmets. I, it's right here. No, what is that, on Facebook? Well, Get out of here. no, it's right here. There's a picture of it. I'm going to ask these people that to That just chat. shows about the versatility of the kangaroo. Where's, where's, where's Julie Smith? Well, Ju ask Julie. No, she says right here, kangaroos are actually dangerous and can kick and scratch the heck out of you. Dingoes are only uh, on Fraser Island. Most of the uh, dangerous critters are in the outback. Okay. Oh, well, and here's, Julie and she says no. We don't ride kangaroos ever. See, she. Well, then this is this is you're, misinformation. You're getting this information. Who do I sue on this? Somewhere funny. What she look at the viewership. We're almost to 700 in this second game. I got to catch the score up here because I'm sitting here talking to you. 57-23, and I, it looks like uh, Tennyson Woods. Oh yeah, 697. Woodsman, 697. We were over 700. We're averaging 700, which, you know, obviously ESPN might have a few more viewers and just barely, but I think that for a high school basketball game, no, they're not. Um, and that's really the key. And, again, make not making light of the one-sided score here because the, the Titans are giving them a very good ball game as far as energy and uh, relentlessness. Glacier Peak just got off to a tremendous start, and there's your difference right there. So, Todd, you got over 40 games going this year, yeah, right? We're gonna over probably, 40. That's just yeah. regular season. Yeah. And I know that there was some, and I haven't seen the update yet for my own scheduling purposes, but there was some that were uh, switched because of the shortage of officials. Yeah, I went through that today, and I don't think it actually is going to affect anything that you've got. Good. And uh, maybe with the expansion of the schedule, I might be able to pick up a game or two more. Yeah, I sure would like that. Now, my next game to join you with us on December 11th at Everett. And Mike Ledeau, who has been on with us numerous times through the years, he's going to be making his first of two appearances doing color. The Edmonds graduate. And he'll be back on on January 16th. I'm also working on getting another person, our official scorer, at the University of Washington for both men's and women's, Husky men's and Husky women's basketball, Laura Sigurdsson, who is an Edmonds Woodway mom, and I'm not like Terrace mom, who's really one of the best official scorers I've ever worked with. What's she going to do? Basket. Do color. Oh, do color. Because that's what we do, actually, not on the air, but through the entire Husky women's game, we're constantly talking about the game. And I said, you know what? I think you'd do a great job on color. Now, I know there's people out there that know who Laura is. You know, certainly members of the Icelandic community. Mm -hmm. She's Nordic. I'm, I'm, what am I? I'm uh, Norwegian. You're Norwegian, yes. I want to mention that coming up, if you're in the Boward or actually anywhere, but Fisherman's Night, and a lot of people know what that is, that is going to be taking place at the Elks Club on December 14th 
through the Norwegian Commercial Club. And they usually pack the house for that. So buy your tickets. Debbie, let me know where they can buy those tickets. Now, are they going to have Ludafisk? Oh, yeah. I think they'll have that. And the thing about it is it's the best seafood imaginable because it's brought in by the uh, the boats down there. And that would include, like, the Northwestern, the ships that are on the deadliest catch. Many of them are headquartered there. You see, the people in Australia are making travel plans to come up for Fisherman's Night. Oh, there, there it is. Go. That's a nice basket right there. I'll tell you, you know, the other thing you got to hand to Tennyson Woods is they're not not—they're doing whatever they can to prevent the mercy rule, which, which is a lead of 40 points or more. Once you hit 40 in the second half, then it's a running clock, except for timeouts and fouls, I believe. Well, you know, even, it doesn't matter, you know, Tennyson Woods or anybody. Um, when... Wow. That's a that's a big one right there. Sam Waldo. You know his you go, mom. Heather. What's his mom's name? Heather. Now, your children have been out for a while, Sarah being the recent, most recent. You still run into a lot of parents, though, here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, not so much anymore. But you got brothers and sisters of uh, athletes or students that went to school with your kids. Yeah, no, you know, I got to tell you, I like Glacier Peak, but I have to admit that if Tennyson Wood was playing Glacier Peak last year, the mm-hmm. score would be reversed. Uh, Glacier Peak, not one of their better years last year, right? They were or, down. They, they, they were and you're going to have that from time yes, to time. Yes, absolutely. And part of that is because you, have, you lose Lake players. Lake Stevens. Yeah, in football. In football. Yeah. yeah. And there's some schools that just continuously find a way to reload and not have to rebuild. Sure, it's been a great experience. Yeah, I'm. It, it's gone well beyond what I expected. I knew it was going to be electric here tonight with the Australian team coming in. And Glacier Peak, we, they never fail to give us a great performance. We love coming here to the gym. Oh, I was going to say about the scoreboards, you know, because they do need to be replaced. I can't believe they haven't replaced them with Dactronics, which is the industry standard. But I was thinking each of you and I take those down. We order up Dactronics replacements, and we just have them build a school. I think that would be a nice touch. <laughs> that would that would be. You know, probably, I'd like it's to see probably a illegal. Board, because if they had a video. Oh, board, man. You know, I can transmit to that board. You could. So people could watch some replays on that board. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah. I think you need There's to. No sweat. That would be incredible. we got to talk to them. That would really be something. There's probably some rule against it. <laughs> yeah. You'll hear from the WIAA. Yeah. What are we at now? What's your count? I think we've probably crossed 700. We don't want to. 752. 752. That is amazing. Now, when you guys did the Lake Stevens game with almost 9,000 viewers, uh, who was your uh, talent that night? Was it Tom? Uh, was Tom doing the play-by-play? No, I had Scott and. Uh, oh, good. And I mean, I mean, it would have yeah. been great for Tom, tall Tom, to do it with his crew because they do an amazing job. But good for Scott and them. No, he, yeah, Tom is is great. It, He's the pro's pro. He is, and he needs a haircut. Yeah, he was looking a little fluffy last night. I think he said he was going to get one. That's oh, over the superstructure. That's, that's off the superstructure support uh, cable. And so uh, we we found a way to work superstructure into the broadcast tonight. We, we didn't have any 2112s tonight, though. No, I. that ties into our love of Rush and their album 2112. And I have often shot you pictures including from uh, the Husky games, and you'll see UW Stanford, and the score is 21-12 or something to that. Well, that's what it is, 21-12. Which is a Canadian band, which is part of the uh, international. Well, what's the, what's the uh, queen ship? The, uh, they're under the crown. Yeah, under the crown. Under the crown. That's, and that's why Canada has Queen Elizabeth and other prominent English people. On their mind. Now, the other thing, and I've been meaning to mention this countless times tonight, is that we lost Henry Kissinger 
former Secretary of State and a legend in the field. Uh, he passed away today, so there's even more international touch. 100 years old. Yeah, I'd trade him for Trudeau, though. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to throw a Julio Rodriguez into that, and also we're going to throw in an Edgar Martinez and see if we can make that trade work. There we go. Look at that. Wow, wow. wow. ice in his veins. Jace Jason. Nelson. And it's up to a 38-point lead. They've more than doubled it. But, again, the score is immaterial. Just watch a, the hustle on both sides out there as these two teams go at it. I, I, I can tell you one thing. that I, I'm not sure that we're going to get the same kind of chat response no, that we got tonight out of any game we do this year. When you're talking so to people fabulous. from Australia that are watching, uh, like uh, Jamie Smith's mom, Poppy Venn's mom, Edie uh, Easterby, and we've had others chime in, uh, Trixie Crouch's dad. And we really haven't heard from the boys' parents, though. Well, somebody says that he has a pet kangaroo here. Wow. <laughs> And he says, I'm in GW11 as well, whatever that means. What is G- I don't know what that Ask means. him what GW11 means. Well, he's listening, so he, I mean, hopefully, well, hopefully we'll have that before the end. Here's somebody that says that uh, Zav Hunty 30, he says, I'm in 401, which. Uh, well, I got to see. I got to think it's like a, a district or, you know, part of. Now, I'm also wondering if Australia calls. Their states prefunctures like Japan does. I don't know. Or provinces, or provinces like Canada. Maybe they're provinces since they're all under the crown. See if you can get that in. What do they call like the Australians? What do they call the states down there? Uh, or provinces or prefunctures? What do they call? Because like Adelaide and the home of Tennyson Woods look to be in the same state. Or whatever they call that down there. Perth has one. There's one out towards the outback. Brisbane's in one. Sydney's in one. And so is Melbourne. Somebody's talking back here. Let's see. It says uh, Jack from the land down under here. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. What? I, I'm not saying anything nice. I mean, bad. I. I no, we're just doing some research. He's off the mark. We have not been nothing but love for Australia. Absolutely. Seriously. You got New Zealand off to the east. So oh, he's he's responding to Jack. Oh. Uh, number 21. Digger. Not us. No, we've just been in, in love with uh, Australia yeah, he, all night. Oh, everybody is uh, liking that, too. They're just... Hearts are going up everywhere. Did somebody rip on Australia? Well, I wasn't getting the rip, but I guess. That's unacceptable. Kick them off. 76-36, so it's at 40 right now. And I believe they're calling, yeah, they're calling for the uh, running clock. Well, it's down to 40 seconds. Yeah, 40 seconds, so it's going to run anyway. Girls won 53-52 for Tennyson Woods College. The Titans beating Glacier Peak. Glacier Peak is going to win the boys game by this significant margin. They're just trying to run the clock down. Sportsmanship. And Brian Hunter stepped off uh, the gas when it got to be a sizable lead. So give him credit for not running it up. Tennyson Woods coming out of backcourt. This is one of eight games. The boys and girls are going to play in the United States or the states as it's referred to out of the country. That's it, 78-36. Let's get Joe Lee up here. We're going to go get number two. Your rubbish around you. Thank you. And you want to take a quick break or you want to keep it here? I think we're a tad bit overwhelmed tonight with the, just the we are. graciousness of everybody we've met from Australia. And, of course, the other thing is we've had some good visits with the Glacier Peak people as well, as we always enjoy coming in here. Last night we were at Jackson. 
Looking forward to getting back here in less than two weeks. We'll be at Everett together. Uh, you know, I don't think that Steve Johnson is going to be anxious to see Glacier Peak this year. Yeah, they're going to be tough to go into Jackson or Jackson over here. Um, but that's – oh, here we go. we got a group pitcher out there. So all of them getting together. I love this. You know, this is going to make the annual – the girls did it earlier – um, I'm sure they're making going to make souvenir pictures as well for both teams. This is sportsmanship in its highest degree right here. United States and Australia coming together. I get chills. I've had a lot of spine chills tonight just because it's been so much great discussions. And, and for us, too, we've learned a lot more about a country that did more than produce the band Men at Work, ACDC, and the Bee Gees. And those are all great bands right there. So we're going to welcome up Joe Lee as soon as Sarah can get him up here. Here he comes. So we got a T-shirt for him. we got large for him. And I love how you have this adrenaline fundraising on the front, player of the game, new graphics on that, and then as seen on stspn.com. Okay. Joe Lee's going to join us. All right, Joe, hold that up there. I I think you've probably won one of these before, haven't you? Yeah. Maybe Joe, more than once. You, you just don't ever go away. Are you a junior? Yeah. Wow. You got another year. Yeah. You, and that. You know, he's like. Uh, he's got literally two years counting this year. Have you ever heard of the uh, the kid named Kingma? Dan Kingma? Well, he was from Jackson. He was one of these guys just like you. He could hit from anywhere. And he just, you're, you're just electric. Watching thank you play, you. it's just you got 12 tonight me. out in the first quarter, and uh, where you don't have the official final numbers, but you really were a catalyst in getting things going there. You hit a couple of threes in that first quarter, but all of you guys just came blasted out of the gate and uh, beat this team from Australia. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so, so what did you get to talk to any of the guys uh, from Australia ahead of the game? Or? Yeah, they came. They came up and uh, sat with us. They're really nice. We had a nice conversation. Yeah. Show me some pictures of kangaroos they see all the time. Great so, deal. You know, we uh, we had Jackson last night. Yeah. And uh, I'm kind of anxious to watch him play him this year. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited. <laughs> you, you guys got a good team out there. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's – is it something that you've seen coming together for a while that you knew 23-24 that this was going to be – and maybe next year too, this is going to be a special team? At the, at the beginning, I didn't think much of it, but then Coach Hunter returning, that's a big part. And then Reed, the sophomore point guard, he's really stepping up. And then yeah. the Mariner transfers help us a lot. Okay, tell so, us who those guys are. Zay, he probably had, I don't know, a lot. He was number three. Yeah. Really good guard, can get a bucket whenever he wants. And then Adam is really athletic, helps rebound, sets screens, make yeah. layups, just does his part. And they're really, really good teammates. I love Fantastic. playing Fantastic. Well, we appreciate you coming up. Uh, we got a picture of him holding the T-shirt out there. Is uh, he's a T-shirt season ticket yeah, holder? He's, he, yeah, he's got uh, so many T-shirts that you notice. We now was adrenaline's uh, the, the 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 leader of adrenaline, which is uh, let's see here, David that Wright. is Dave Wright, David Wright. His daughter designed that for this year. So oh, nice, yeah, a nice new uh, three-dimensional design on there. We appreciate that. And then uh, it you. says uh, as seen on. Uh, STSPN. Yeah. So on the back yeah. side, there you yeah. go. <laughs> nothing, nothing like a uh, great plug there. So, Joe, thanks a lot. Yep. Thank and you guys. we'll see you again. I know that. Yep. Great job. You are Mr. Automatic. So, thank you very thank much. You. We thank everybody for uh, everything tonight. This was a special one with the Australian team coming in. We want to thank all of our viewers tonight. What'd you end up with tonight? Let's take a look here. Yeah. Um, 8.37. 8.37, and it just kept climbing all night long. We had over 700 for the first game, and so we got over 1,500 viewers tonight. Uh, I'll tell you what, that just says a lot for people, and especially we just kept looking, and they kept coming, and we also had incredible chat with uh, chats with our friends from Australia, yeah, our new there's, friends there's from a, Australia, our new best friends. There's a little battle going on there right now, so I don't even know who's who, but... Uh, Somebody got somebody riled up. Well, if they're saying anything wrong about Australia, uh, that's on, that's inappropriate.
We have had, we love it. We're we're going to, we got to start, we got to book a flight. So we're going to wrap it up as uh, the boys win big. uh, Was it 78 to 36? And the girls won for Tennyson Woods, 53 52. So the boys for Glacier Peak, the girls for Tennyson Woods. And uh, we want to say for Sarah Elvig, Todd Elvig, I'm Mark Ockett saying, winning is for tonight, sportsmanship is for a lifetime. And more basketball coming your way on STSPN tomorrow from Everett High School. No, tomorrow's Snohomish. Snohomish High School. Then Everett. Then Everett on Friday. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great night.